Angels, and welcome to chapel at Mid-America Christian University. We are so glad you're here this morning. I want to welcome our special guests who are here for the Flourish Conference. We're so honored to have you on our campus and hope you have a terrific day. I want to welcome those who are joining us online today, wherever you are. We're so glad you're a part of our MacU family. Next week is going to be a special week, students, as we have our Board of Trustees here on campus. I want to encourage you to welcome them, to introduce yourself, to tell them about your MACU experience. Uh, our trustees are a group of women and men from across the country who are excited about what God is doing on our campus and are so supportive of all the ways that we are growing. And I hope you'll greet them next week. And also, I want to give a shout out to our women's basketball team who is going to be going on Tuesday night to Park City, Kansas to play Sterling College. Go get them. Have a great game. We're looking forward to celebrating with you all. It's going to be a great week. We're glad you're here. Let's, let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity to come together and pause in the midst of a, a really busy time as we are going through classes and through so many different activities and preparing for spring break, preparing for trips and so on. We just pray that you'll quiet our hearts for a few moments this morning and speak to us. We pray that through the worship and through the word, uh, you would help us to become the whole persons you've created us to be because we're here to be prepared to do great things for you and for your kingdom. And so we give ourselves in surrender in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and worship together. Sometimes I wonder if he's faithful. Does he see me in my trouble? Does he understand? Sometimes I question if he's able. Can he rescue? Can he save me again and again? When I Yes. 
stripped away and I simply come longing just to much deeper much deeper You know, I think when we read um, the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, we kind of skim through um, this narrative that it started out with nothing. The universe was nothing. But as soon as God speaks, let there be light. There's just life everywhere. We're singing this song, Graves into Gardens, this morning. And it's a really beautiful illustration because... There's a story where Jesus is hanging on the cross moments before he's about to die. And the man hanging on a cross next to him recognizes him as who he is, the source of eternal life, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And Jesus responds to him by saying, tomorrow you will be with me in paradise. Now what's really interesting is that the word paradise is not an English word. It's just an English version of the Greek word paradesos, which literally means garden. And guys, listen, God's whole plan is not to make you a better person. Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. He came to make your grave empty this morning. I just want you guys to think about that as we sing this next song. I 
present for you this morning and, and with all the hustle and bustle happening in all of our lives in this culture of production and efficiency and more and more and more and more help us to slow down this morning because you are always talking to us so help us to listen through our speaker dr jones this morning help us to see you this morning Lord, I pray for every heart in this room that it softens to receive your word. But we are thankful for you. We are thankful for the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, on our behalf. We love you. We praise you. And we are still grateful for an empty tomb this morning. But on that, can you say amen? Well, this morning, we are so honored and privileged to have the 11th president of Oklahoma City Community College, Dr. Matra Staley-Jones. She started her tenure at Oklahoma City Community College just down the street on March 1st of 2022. She and I are both completing our first year as new presidents of colleges that are just so close together right here in South Oklahoma City. But I first met Dr. Jones 15 years ago when we were both nonprofit leaders in Oklahoma City. We were part of a leadership class together, and I remember thinking at the time, this is an amazing woman of faith who is going to go so far in leadership in our city. She's done exactly that by not only leading in nonprofit areas, but in higher education, including a wonderful time at Langston University. Uh, she has been recognized in so many ways through the years, including most recently, Forbes named her as one of the top 10 black higher education CEOs to watch in 2023. She was named a National Mother of the Year. The Journal Record named her as one of the most admired CEOs in our city. Her list of accomplishments is incredibly long, but I know she would probably tell you her greatest accomplishment is her family, including her husband Bernard and her children, uh, Bernard Kennedy and Brendan. What I want to tell you is that Dr. Jones is an incredible woman of faith, one who leads with a heart for students, a heart for Christ, a heart for our city. And I know that God has prepared a special message for you today, because as we came together this morning, we said, you know, it's been one of those days where everything's been coming at us. It's been busy and full with people and activities and events, and we know that God is about to do something powerful. So I want you to join me in welcoming my friend, our neighbor, 
the president of Oklahoma City Community College, Dr. Matra Staley-Jones. Sorry, uh, I'm still right there in praise and worship. What an incredible job. Let's give another round of applause for the praise team. Thank you, Lord. What a, what a special time to be here. Thank you so much, President Greenwald. I was uh, thrilled to receive the invite. And let me tell you, your faculty and staff and leadership, they work around the clock. I mean, I think I was literally at President Greenwald's investiture when I received the invitation to speak. <laughs> and that was back in the fall. So. They, were, they, they think about you all all the time, and they think about ways that they can enhance your experience and make sure that you have um, incredible examples in front of you. And so I, when, when I accepted the invitation um, uh, by, by Dr. Amac, <laughs> I uh, said, you know, that's, that's, that's quite a bit of a ways away. And I uh, was ha certainly excited uh, to accept the invitation. However, we're here today, so... Uh, praise be to God. We're going to start off with a reading from the first chapter of Jeremiah. So if you'll join me. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. And the word of the Lord came to me the second time, saying, What do you see? Yes, Matthew, what do you see? Please bow your heads for a word of prayer. Almighty God, creator of the universe, the one who hears and sees and loves this morning, we pause to simply say, we love you and we trust you. Thank you for this honor to stand before your people today to deliver a word of encouragement. Help me to decrease in this moment so that you may increase. I am but your willing vessel to be used. So use me, Lord, and may your people gathered here today be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Good morning, Matthew students, faculty, staff, online viewers, Pastor Duguay, and President Greenwald. It is a pleasure to be here at MidAmerica Christian University. And it is an honor to speak to you today. If I had to title my message, it would be, Children of the Most High God, know you are set apart, appointed, and anointed. This title sounds like a blessing, right? We are children of the Most High God, and the Most High God has anointed us and has appointed us. These are all good things. But then we get to the part of the title that says, set apart. Let us pause for a second 
and truly reflect on what it means to be set apart. When have you felt all alone? When have you felt different from the rest? When have you felt excluded from a group? In that moment, did you feel blessed? I know I didn't. Again, I want to ask you, what do you see? But let me frame it differently. Who do you see? Today, I have big titles in front of my name, tons of accolades and achievements, many trophies and plaques, which are a result of hard work in God's grace. But my beginning does not look like my now. Growing up, I was raised by my grandmother because my mother had her own personal struggles. I won't go into depth, but her struggle was mental illness, which did not make for a stable environment for me or my siblings. As a youngster, it was tough. There were so many moments when I felt set apart because I did not have the same life experiences as the other little girls due to my mother's struggles. However, I knew I was loved by God. And at an early age, I knew my life had purpose. Yet, I still wished and longed for that stable, loving family. However, I had to learn how to acknowledge and accept that God's master plan was and is for me to be set apart in this way. I did not know it then, but I understand it now. God's plan for my life has a greater purpose. And today, my brothers and sisters, I can truly say I count it all joy. Due to the many trials and tragic marks on my childhood, I believe I have obtained a certain level of sensitivity to those with similar backgrounds who were going through their own heavy seasons of life. And because of that level of sensitivity, I am in a position to lead with compassion, grace, dignity, and empathy. Students and staff members at Oklahoma City Community College have gone through and are going through life experiences that mirror in some way what I've gone through. Because I've been through those hardships, I am able to lead and connect with them. I'm not perfect, but I do strive to have the right mindset and the right attitude as I interface with each person I encounter at OCCC. My goal is to let them know that I see them, I hear them, and they matter. My goal is to love on each person, no matter their race, religion, zip code, or political affiliation. In the 10th chapter of the book of, 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 the book of Luke, a well-educated man asks Jesus what he must do to inherit eternal life. Jesus answers him with the question, what does the law say? The man replies, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. The man goes on to ask, but who is my neighbor? And Jesus proceeds to tell the parable of the Good Samaritan. If you do not know the story of the Good Samaritan, you must read Luke chapter 10 because it is powerful. In this chapter, Jesus teaches us not to love through the, lens of, the lenses of race, religion, zip code, political affiliation, etc. He simply teaches us what love looks like in action and not theory. And sometimes loving others causes us to be set apart. I believe that being set apart is one of the hardest and loneliest parts of a Christian's walk. Jesus said, if you want to become a disciple of mine, you must deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. But what does that look like? Dear brothers and sisters, I believe Joseph's story is a good example 
of what that looks like. His story is full of moments of being set apart, which came from being anointed and appointed. His life was riddled with these amazing mountaintop moments. His his father favored him and made him a beautiful coat of many colors, set apart. His brothers were out tending to his father's flock, and Joseph was able to stay home, set apart. One day, Joseph looked up and found himself wealthy and powerful in a prosperous land called Egypt, away from his own people, set apart. Now, do not fall in love with the mountaintop moments of Joseph's life and forget what led him there, the valley experiences. Joseph's father, Jacob, loved Joseph's mother, Rachel, more than he loved Leah, Jacob's other wife, who was Rachel's older sister. I'll tell you, sometimes the Bible reads more like a soap opera. Whereas Rachel had difficulty with her pregnancies, Leah was fertile. And Joseph, not to be confused with the father, Jacob, I don't know about you, but sometimes it is hard keeping these biblical names straight, was Rachel's firstborn son. However, Rachel died giving birth to Joseph's brother, Benjamin. So Jacob's favorite wife is now dead, and I can only imagine this led to Jacob lavishing his love for his favorite dead wife upon her firstborn son, Joseph. Whereas Joseph's ten brothers still had their mothers, yes, there were two other moms, I told you it reads like a soap opera. Joseph had to watch his father place a standing stone on his mother's grave as they were traveling to Bethlehem. And now Joseph is left with the responsibility of sharing his mother's life with his baby brother who came into the world at the cost of their mother's life. And all his other brothers could see was a coat of many colors set apart. As we continue to reflect on Joseph's life, I would like to ask the worship team to come back to the stage. So the brothers take poor Joseph like he hasn't been through enough already and throw him into a pit set apart. Then his brothers have an epiphany. They realize that they can make some quick cash, and they sell poor Joseph into slavery, set apart. And at some point, Joseph's boss, boss's wife accuses him of assault, and Joseph is thrown into jail, set apart. But God has a way of taking what the devil meant for harm and turning it into greater good. The story goes like this, the, the moral of the story. Through Joseph's faithfulness and God-given gifts, Joseph was able to save Egypt from famine and reunite with his family. Despite the trials he faced, Joseph remained steadfast in his faith, and he trusted that God had a plan for him. It is clear we see that from a youth, Joseph was set apart by God. But that is what produced the anointing and carved out the path for the appointing. There is no doubt that Joseph faced many hardships, but he never lost faith in God. He remained steadfast in his convictions and trusted that God had a plan for him. We too face trials and challenges in our lives. We may feel like we are in a prison trapped by our circumstances and unable to escape. I've been there. But like Joseph, we must remain faithful to God and trust that he has a plan for us too. Even in the midst of our trials, we can draw strength from God, his holy word, and his promises. Am I right, Pastor DeGay? Am I right, President Greenwald? We can also, also learn from Joseph's gift from interpreting dreams. Just as God gave Joseph wisdom and discernment, he can also give us the gifts we need to serve him and make a positive impact on the world. 
We must remain open to the leading of the Holy Spirit and use our gifts to serve others and bring glory to God. As we look around us today, we can see that the world is full of challenges. We face difficulties in our personal lives, in our communities, and in our global society. We are all on our own unique journeys, facing our own challenges and struggles. But we must remember, we are not alone. God is always with us, guiding us through the ups and downs of life. So I challenge you to embrace the story of Joseph as a source of inspiration and strength. Let us remain steadfast in our faith, even when things get tough. Let us work hard and persevere, trusting that God has a plan for us. And let us never forget that we are all part of a community that is united by a common purpose and a common faith. It's with great joy and gratitude that I stand before you today to share with you the amazing ways in which God has used my trials and how he's used them for good. My journey's not been an easy one. I faced so many challenges, obstacles, and setbacks along the way, but through it all, God has been my rock, my strength, and my comfort. I want to encourage you to never lose faith. Remain strong in your convictions and trust that God has a plan for you. Together, let us continue to take heart from Joseph's example and remain faithful to God, even in the midst of our mountaintop experiences and our valley low experiences. Let us trust that God has a plan for us and he's going to use our experiences for his glory. And this day, Let us pledge to use the gifts God has given us to make a positive impact on the world by loving God with all of our hearts, souls, minds, and strengths, and loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. If you do not believe that it is possible to overcome the tragedies of life and to be used for greater good, I would ask you, Matthew, what do you see? May God bless each and every one of you. And again, thank you for this honor. Um, We have one more song. We invite you guys to stand up and uh, worship with us. Yours. 
still on your throne So whatever I'm feeling I still got a reason to pray To beat again, long stretch to breathe you in, souls just erupt into praise. When you come around, dry bones come to life, deserts to paradise, souls just are rolling away. When you come around, my heart starts to beat again, long stretch to breathe you in, souls just erupt into praise. We thank you for that story. We thank you for that evidence that you see us, that you care about us, and the testimony of Dr. Jones that has moved this room to help us to know that. Even though we're told in churches, even though we're told here at Mackey that God sees us and God loves us, we thank you for this story that is a reminder that all that is true. That you can bring beauty from ashes. That you can set slaves and captives free. That you can turn graves into gardens. And as long as your tomb is still empty, Jesus, we have a reason to praise in this room. God, I, I pray this, this incredible testimony moves us and, and you help us to wrestle with it today and the rest of our lives. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We pray a safe and incredible weekend. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm Matthew. Say amen and amen. Y'all dismissed. Have a great weekend.